We are here with our friend, your name is? Matthew. Matthew. Matthew is, uh, you came from United States, yeah? Your question was about uh, the spirit, are we are separate from God or are we connected to God? What is our connection? That was your initial question, yeah? Essentially, yeah. And we have agreed in the beginning of the argument, yeah? That if, if the truth was whatever it is, we have to embrace it and to follow it. That's what was the agreement. Yeah? And I told you earlier, if I prove to you that with your own reasoning, that Islam is the right way and the true way to have faith in God and to follow God, you said you're going to be embracing it, correct? Yeah? All right. Now, let's start with the beginning. I asked you uh, about the existence of God. You told me it's hard to put it into words. Yeah? That's what you mentioned. Now... Let me describe to you. Now, according to your standard now, your narratives about the existence of God, you're kind of, uh, uh, you know, you say, you believe, do you believe in higher power? There is something there. Do you believe in this? You believe there is higher power? You believe something that exists there? I certainly believe in the possibility of it. Okay. We will be using what we call it the nullification arguments, which means we'll bring all these possibility, and then we will see, and if these possibilities they make sense, we'll accept it. If they don't make sense, we'll nullify them. Yeah? We exist here. Do you accept that we exist? Do you accept the universe exists? Yeah. <laughs> Some people, they come there, I don't know. Yeah? Some are even skeptic about the existence of themselves. Yeah? Let's say, since we are, we exist, and the universe exists, now the next question is, how did we came into existence? How this universe came into existence? Did this universe came out of nothing? Nothing? And then it came, it just you know, just came into out of nothing. Or this universe was there always, infinitely, that was there always. Or this universe, yeah, created itself by itself, yeah. Uh, so these are the, you could see these are what, from, my, from what I remember, these are the possibilities. Do you have any other possibility that you think about the existence of this universe? Either came out of nothing, well, or, or created itself by itself, yeah, or it was there always, or it was created by a creator. These four arguments. Do you have any other possibility? Well, there's always the uh, um, the newer theory that it's all a simulation, but I, I feel like that's a, that's a, that's equally hard to prove. Yes, my point is these are the ones, these are the possibilities. Do you have any other possibilities in your mind? Not that I can think of. Okay, let's start by one by one. The universe came out of nothing. Can nothing produce anything? When I'm talking about nothing, the absence of everything, the absence of material, the absence of energy, absence of everything. Can it produce anything? Can nothing produce something, essentially? Yeah. yeah. Not that I know. Definitely not. I mean, nothing, um, as I mentioned to you, when we describe the nothing, we're talking about the absence of everything. There is nothing there. No, no energy, no material, nothing. So that's why it's impossible nothing to produce anything. So that's nullify this universe. That the universe created itself by itself, meaning that the universe, it has to pre-exist before existence to create itself, just like you giving birth to yourself. Does that make sense to you? Are you thinking that you have a deep thinking about it? Do you know what means that to pre-exist before existence? Yes. Well, well how, how can one know something that seems so impossible? Um, I mean, it doesn't need to have that deep, you know. Before existence to pre-exist, when the starting point of your existence to pre-exist, that's impossible, basically. One second, we have a discussion here. If you can move to the other side, yeah, yeah. I have a thought on that, but I can't, I can't quite articulate it. There is no way to articulate it. There is no way to, to think. The, the, basically, you know, it means you yourself, you have to be there before your existence and then to decide to exist, do you see the, do you see the problem? 
Well, can you see the problem or you can't see the problem? Well, decide to exist. I, no one decides to exist. Um, yeah, that's my point. That's why no one decides to exist. That's my, that's my main thing. Because there is no except, one decides to exist. Except after you do no, already exist. exist. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. 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 I mean, no one decides to exist after you do already exist. I yeah, mean, that's obviously my... you decide to exist in this moment after you've existed for so many more moments. Yeah, yeah, basically that's impossible. That shows it's impossible to pre-exist for existence. And so you would have to have always existed. Is the so then the last argument to be have to have uh, be always existed, meaning infinity. Does infinity exist in the, in the real world? I would argue yes. Based on what? Well, the mathematical nature of the I'm mathematician. And, 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 and energy. Yeah, it's, um, it's finite. It's uh, finite. I, I don't know if I would agree with that. Mostly mostly due to, to the, the sort of fractal nature that the universe it's finite. has. Not, not exactly. It's, no. it's infinity within no, a finite no, no. space. They describe it. They describe it, but it's finite. Since there is boundaries for this universe, that's finite. Boundaries, but it goes infinitely deep. No, it's finite. The universe is fine. Have you, Do you ever, know, have you ever heard of something called the Mandelbrot set? Have, uh, I'm it's mathematician. By the way, I, I am mathematician. Yeah, numbers. we are so using. You have that. Yeah, yeah. I'm that's, mathematician. That's, that's something that that. Really I, listen, I, I am mathematician, and I know infinity is a hypothesis. It's an assumption describing something cannot be figure, cannot be achieved. For example, with our own mind, which means. For example, infinity, infinity plus one is still infinity. Infinity, infinity minus one is still infinity. Infinity plus one minus one is infinity. Meaning, it is a figure, it is something that it has no existence in the real, in real numbers. So, since this universe is real, and since the particles and the atoms and everything are real, that means it is finite. And this universe, since the, this universe, it's. I feel like that's a big assumption. No, no. Because how this is how it is, by the way. For example, when you are, when you are, for example, when you are talking about materials, you're talking about existence materials. You're talking about the beginning of the universe. So it has a beginning. So the, and as with all cosmology, cosmologists as well believe the universe has a, has a beginning. So which, which and that they try to describe the beginning by Big Bang or whatever, what you know, you name it. Yeah. Even though not, I'm not necessarily fond fond of uh, of Big Bang theory or whatever. But my point is they agree that there is a starting point. So since there is a starting point, that means it's not infinity, basically. It's finite. Anything that has a starting point is finite. Simple as that. Anything that has a starting point is finite. It's finite, yeah, yeah. So if with... I'm talking about real life, real, real. Life. real. Okay. Yeah. So you think that the universe will end someday? Yeah, yeah, it will end some way. It will, it will. Eventually it will end at a certain point. How do you think that's going to happen? Now, how do you think that's going to happen? That's the answer which is we will be, which the Quran has answered this. But before we get to that point, let's establish this. Yeah. So since infinity, it is an assumption, a hypothesis, describing something which is describing a huge number, but still, it's, when I'm talking about the universe, real universe, real life things, or uh, you could say that means it's a, it's, it's a finite. So that's why that goes as well, that when we're talking about the beginning of the universe, that means basically it is finite. So that's why it's impossible to say the universe existed, was there always, and will be there always. Yeah? So then we come to the last to the last conclusion, which is the universe was created by a creator, which was called basically this creator. The narratives that we have in this universe is not necessarily applies to this creator. Yeah? The narratives that applies to us here is not necessarily applies to this creator, which means again, and that is the God when God. And that's the definition of, but that's what we're talking about God. But let's talk about the higher power before we come to the point of God, yeah? So this higher power created this universe, and this higher power has certain characteristics, yeah? All-knowing, knowledgeable to do things. This universe, the way that it is, the way that it's structured, has to come out of knowledge. It doesn't come out of ignorance, yeah? Secondly, all-powerful, so powerful to create this 
this humongous universe and as well has independent will, has a will to decide to do something, to decide not to do something. And that's, if we accept this, then this is what we're talking about God, we're talking about the divine, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Do you agree? Uh, could you restate that? So, the creator of this universe, that's the last option which we have, then if there is a creator, this higher power, this higher power has certain characteristics. Should be all powerful to create this universe, should have the power, a possessor of all power, basically, to create this universe. Secondly, has to be all-knowing, so intelligent, all-knowing, knowing everything, yeah, to do what, to do, for example, to create this universe the way that it is. Thirdly, should have independent will, yeah, meaning that will decide to do something without, for example, influence of any, of any other, basically. Will decide to do something, will decide not to do certain things. And that is the definition of God. All powerful, all knowing has independent will. Do you agree? Matthew. Do you agree? Maybe. And I say maybe because I only I only think that because you have you don't have other <laughs> many other choices. I understand. By the way, that is here. Let me tell you something. Yeah. And actually, instead of having been skeptical about about, for example, these things, is actually it when you put all of these things. You know the puzzle. Yeah, the puzzle, there's each piece has its own place, particular place. When you put it in the particular place, then everything makes sense. Yeah. Now you are in a situation because you are skeptical about different things. It's just like a puzzle which is, is all over the place. But when you put things in place, then everything will make sense to you. And that's why in Islam, we don't believe, yeah? In Islam, we don't believe in blind faith. We believe as well to understand things. We will use our own reasoning. We will use our own... Yeah. Yeah. We will use our own analogy, we will use our own reasoning to understand about the purpose of our creation. Now let's establish this. Let's me and you accept there is a divine. And this all-powerful, all-knowing has independent will. Yeah? Since we don't have much other choices. Yeah? The question is, why this divine, why this creator created us? For what purpose? Why? Why are we here? Remember, bear in mind, bear in mind that this creator is all-powerful, all-knowing, meaning he knows what he has created. When I say he doesn't mean he's an agenda, I'm talking about he as, you know, just to, def to describe it. So my point is, when he has created us, yeah, when he has created us, he has created for a purpose. So he knows why he has created us for. Now the question is to you, Matthew, what do you think the purpose of our creation? Well, that relies on there being a divine. What? That re purpose requires there to be a divine. And as you said, that of those four options, that seems to be the, the logical way to end. But my, my uh, speculation, I don't know if that's the right word. My question is, why does there need to be a purpose? Why, it, just because you can't picture the universe coming from nothing, why can't that be true? Yeah, because I can go on to the assumption. Of proof is not proof of absence. I, I agree with you to some extent, but here we are, we have already proved that there is no proof for nothing produce anything. Basically, simple as that. So that's why we cannot use that argument. Basically. Well, yeah, the proof of absence. Uh, absence is proof is not the proof of absence. Just because something hasn't been proved. I agree. I true. agree. I agree. That shows. That tells us, with our own reasoning. Yeah, that nothing produces any, anything, basically. It doesn't produce anything. It's nothing, nothingness. You know, you know what it means nothingness? Nothingness. No energy, which is actually, just the hypothesis itself, is impossible to imagine. You understand? You may find something absence of material, but you cannot, you cannot impose absence of power and absence of energy. Why? It doesn't exist in the real life, in our life, in, in this universe. It doesn't exist. Think about a vacuum, a vacuum of material, but there is impossible to have vacuum of energy. Energy of the gravity, whatever, the impact, whatever the things, even the gravity of, of, of particles around that vacuum, it, they still have kind of influence. 
So just only to think about it, it doesn't exist even. May, may, I, uh, may, may I add something? Yes. Yeah. Uh, possibility of, of happening that yeah is, is it correct sure yeah so let let us take two possibilities one is something th there is there is something called nothing you say i'm i'm using terms but uh, forgive uh, me about using mis terms because let let's see some nothing as something and then you proposing that from this nothing something can come okay your problem. This is one option, and our position is that nothing can come from something cannot come from nothing. This is our position. Sure. These are two possibilities. Now, if I go to our through our possibility, then it all, uh, logically leads to a being beyond this universe, who is, who is capable of creating everything, and he is able. All qualities belong to him. Okay. No. Now. Given your possibility, let us analyze that. Whether that means that there is a creator or something able entity beyond this universe. So your nothing is able to create something. By your definition, nothing. Now I am going to your possibilities. Your possibility. So your possibility is that your nothing is capable of creating nothing and uh, something. Yeah. Yeah. So now we'll we'll characterize your nothing. Well, maybe maybe my, it's, my, it's my brother, you know. Around. Maybe nothing defines something and something defines nothing. And I, I that's a, again. Thought, you see, hey, that's oh, yeah, a problem. I'm that. Because you take something real like mass or energy. You, you go down to the atomic level, some atomic level, you know, you got your neutrons, protons, electrons, then you go even deeper and you get your quarks. And say you have the most individual, finite building block of matter. Is there space between that and the next individual building block of matter? And if so, is that space between not nothing? No. No, no, no. Do you know why? Because there is energy there. But what is energy? At, yeah, it, the, the energy between the, these particles and this particle, there's energy there. Even with that, there is energy. When I'm talking about nothing, I'm talking about the absence, include the absence of everything, including energy. There's no energy at all. You have quantum fields. Basically, your fundamental building blocks are no longer fundamental building blocks according to present understanding of physics. We know that quantum fields are pervading all the space. No? Quantum what? Quantum fields. 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 Quantum yeah. fields. From there, from quantum fluctuation, particles pop. Particles pop out and goes to non-existence again into energy energy form of the energy form of the field. So basically, the fields, so this quantum field basically causes ability. Ability means energy. You know? So you are nothing. Whatever you uh, are trying to mean by nothing is basically physically something. Physically not nothing. It is quantum fields. So your nothing is not actually nothing in the sense we yes. use nothing. Yeah, that's why what you are using now here still is impossible because even with that very small narrow area, what you are saying, which is they said absence of any particles at this point, still there is energy there because of the quantum fields. You understand? Because of this, basically it doesn't exist. Can you define a quantum field? Okay, quantum fields. Are, sorry, quantum fields. It, it can. It, it is defined as. Uh, I mean, some function or operator spread over space. Space. Uh, yeah, space. Yeah. Like a sheet, kind of thing. For example, I can give you the water surface. From there, you, you uh, create a disturbance, and a disturbance travels as a wave from one part to another. So this disturbance you can imagine as a particle. Likewise, in quantum in, in fields, if you have a perturbation. And, 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 in a way, it's I, like I, throwing I, a pebble into you know, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. the water. And, 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 adding, and, so and okay, adding to so this, and adding to this, nothing, by the way, and adding to nothing beyond the way, listen, listen. like in the distance, you throw a pebble here, it hasn't reached there yet. Is that over there nothing? 
or is it something? Because it's technically on that plane, but the energy hasn't reached that part of the plane. Yeah. Yeah. My, my friend Matthew, again, what we are saying to you, now even between these particles, there is energy between them, meaning the gravity fields between them is still there. Do you understand? Which means even the smallest, the smallest particle that we are talking about, there is that it has some kind of gra gravity there. Yeah, the gravity of of the Earth, the gravity of the the Moon, the gravity of anything. There is always field of gravity, whatever it is. Even the gravities of the particles themselves. So there is nothing called absence of everything in this universe. Vacuum of everything. Do you understand the point? Add to that, that this, Did you get it? Uh, he, he got it. He got it. Yes, Do you understand the point? So that's, that's why nothing, point. nothing produced nothing. That's what's the, what it is. It's, it's it's impossible. You're talking about things which it doesn't exist. Now. But that that speculation I just had before, where that part of the plane where energy particles have not reached yet, is that nothing? Because there is no energy. There is no matter. But there are other yes. things. You're talking about one plane. You're talking about one thing. But there are. Hundreds, hundreds, and millions, hundreds and thousands, and millions of particles that they have certain energy between themselves. The particles themselves, there is energy between them. You said this is. You said when you go to the smallest, to the smallest thing, and the in the neutrons, for example, or the smallest thing between them, even the photon. They said this is the, the 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 smallest thing. Yeah. They said even there is as one between a photon and another photon. There is energy between them. Which they cannot, which they cannot describe. I think whatever you are uh, uh, terming as field or empty field, it is not actually empty. This is a field, and this field has energy. Sheikh is trying to uh, convince you like uh, like that. Whatever you are saying that uh, that is empty space or something kind of that, that is not empty. It pulls energy. So, so that is the thing. You cannot it have energy. It poses, poses. It has, uh, it has energy okay. within it. For its own existence, it has to have some energy ability for existence. Even in space time has its own energy. You know, for 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 something to be in existence, it needs some ability to hold, be in existence, and to be held in existence. So that is how now modern definition of energy goes. No. So, you know. Now, so, do, now yeah, do, you yeah, accept, do you accept now the argument that nothing produced nothing, and there should be something to produce something? Yeah. If yeah? there is anything called nothing which is able to create something, then, then that nothing no longer uh, remains uh, uh, the nothing. <laughs> it becomes capable. Yeah. yeah basically, the nothingness is again is a hypothesis which doesn't exist in the real world. That's how it is. <laughs> So that's why, even 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 with this, yeah, even with this, that this space, when this space started as a starting point, where it was, was it in a space, in certain space? This is the problem here. That's why they can't describe it. So that's why vacuum and absence of everything it doesn't exist. So that's why going back to the point. So there must be a creator for this universe then the next the next stop or the next point is why what is the purpose of us of, 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 of this creation well, my next stop would be is the creator infinite then now what do you mean by infinite beyond meaning time and space beyond time and space yes that's true because god is not bounded with time and space. but we need to describe what's the meaning of time are you talking about god was be before the time or whatever Again, even the description of time, which is, for example, which is the period between an action and the next action, if this is considered to be time, you know, that applies everywhere, basically. But God is beyond this, beyond what we are, our imagination, beyond the space, yeah, in terms of the space. But in terms of that, in the same time as well, that God, when, when God has created this universe, yeah, so that's why we need to understand it's not about the limitation about God, when we were talking about it, but God chose to do certain things, created this universe, and actually not necessarily mixing with this universe, yeah? Not necessarily, that's the, which is the answer for the question about the spirit. Is our spirit or our souls are connected with God or not? That's why we say no, the spirit are the creation of God. God has created our souls and our spirits, yeah? God has created, not necessarily, is, is basically a consequence of his creation rather than attached to him. You understand the difference? 
I don't, because I don't understand how something can interact with another thing and not be attached. Now I will tell you what's the meaning of this. When God, God has mentioned in the Quran, people they will ask you about the soul or the spirit. They will say that the soul is one of the from the commandments of my Lord. And I don't know much knowledge about it. Meaning, these are from the secrets of God. Which, which is the soul? What's the difference between the soul? Is it energy? Which is they can't they cannot use as energy? Does it influence the energy? It could be. But where it came from, they don't know. What does it do when there is a life in a cell, when there is a, a spirit or the soul goes to the cell, it functions. And if it's not there, it doesn't function. Where this soul came from? Who influenced this soul? Let alone that this soul has a conscious. Us, when this soul, uh, when this spirit attached to the body, then you have a conscious to decide to do things, to decide not to do things. Which is so, something beyond, again, our imagination. That's why we go back to say, actually, we came from something, which is the Creator. He has created us and created our souls. And at least this is the thing here, the purpose of our creation is to be grateful to God. Basically, that's what God wants from us. That's why we have our own conscience. That's why we, have, we are able to decide to do things. We are able to decide the right and the wrong. We are able to make mistakes. We are able, that's why we have this freedom, freedom of choice. Yeah, we have free choice. Because of this, God has created us for this purpose to choose to worship him, to choose to be grateful to him. Otherwise, if it's about creating, uh, you know, creation that eat, drink, reproduct, animals do a better job than us. Yeah? Animals do a better job. They, they, they eat, they drink, they breed. They don't have to, they don't cause pollution. They don't cause atomic bombs. They don't do all of these things. They just only, you know, they, 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 they are there. They live and die and that, that's it. But he has created us I, for a deeper meaning. I don't meaning. know if that's, if that's completely true. I, I, I do have a, a, an anecdote off the top of my head in that. Um, supposedly billions of years ago, and there's proof of this in, in iron ore in Michigan, that there were a... Uh, a large group of prokaryotes, like single-celled organisms, colonies of them, and they were producing oxygen. And they ended up producing so much oxygen, they wiped out 99% of, of all life on Earth. So it, 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 I'm, I'm using that as an example because life can pollute, it can destroy other life without even knowing. My, something single-celled, yeah, yeah, something my, my point, my, my, my point is can destroy other life without even realizing. No, my point is, well, this is without the conscious. For example, that these... It can these destroy can, itself without even realizing. Yeah, this is, a, this would, because they don't have this conscious to, so, to know what to, what to do, what not to do. Unlike us, we choose to do this knowingly what, what's the consequence of our thing. We do that. We know when we, when you guys there, when you threw the atomic bomb to, to Nagasaki or Hiroshima, you knew the consequence was going to happen. Unlike an animal will do something, you know, unlike them certain, certain crows and things like this, which they could, they could cause burning the jungle, etc., and killing other birds and other things. They don't have the conscious, they don't have the conscious to think that this is, this is going to happen. They just do things without that conscious to decide to do, to cause, for example, a mass destruction. You understand? Us, we choose to do things. That means we are, we are capable to destroy the earth with our conscious, knowingly that we are destroying it, unlike the others. So that's why if there is someone, and they, if there are two people, they said the more responsibility they, uh, you have, uh, sorry, the more, uh, you could say, um, the more impact that you have, the more responsibility will be upon you, yeah? Which means if your influence was more on the others, that means your responsibility, responsibility is way more than the others. So the same thing, when our, our impact on others, is greater than others, uh, the other animals. That's why our responsibility is greater than them. So what's our responsibility then? So God has mentioned this clearly in the Quran. When God has created Adam, God said to the angels that I'm making a successor on earth, Khalifa. Meaning he will be taking over. He's going to be responsible. He's going to be, you know, he'll be have responsibility towards the earth. And at the same time, and his, the purpose of his creation is to worship God. Meaning to be grateful to God. That's the meaning of worship in Islam. And worship in Islam, not necessarily only the prayer that we do and the, and the act of worship. We, everything that we do on the day-to-day -day things, this is an act of worship. Us being good and kind to each other, us being fulfilling the duties of our parents, us being good to our neighbors, being good in our community. 
this is some this is the this is the that's that's how to be grateful to God. And this is an act of worship. So the meaning of worship in Islam is very broad meaning. It's not just only your relation with God, it's as well your relation with the creation of God, including the mankind, the all other creation of God. That's why we are not allowed, for example, to hunt just for the sake of hunting. We are allowed to hunt for, for food to eat. Otherwise, we shouldn't be getting these animals as a target just to hunt for the sake of hunting, or fishing for the sake of fishing, or killing creatures for the sake of doing that. No. So we're bounded and restricted with these things. And at the same time, God has made certain laws and legislations, which is as well, which, which, what, will we do, what it will do, it will manage our relation with our parents, manage our relation with our sisters, brothers, manage our relation with our neighbors, our community, etc. Now, according to this concept, to the people who have these things, now we know, we know, in the animal's life that, you know, that they will find, uh, you'll find, for example, the, the, the son of, for example, or let's say, uh, the child of this animal, yeah, later on when they grow up, they may, they may, they may have intercourse with the mother. That's normal. To produce rabbits, for example. A male rabbit, when they become uh, the age of, for example, when they come at the age that of, of mating, they will mate with their mothers. That's fine. It happens. But for us, is insist something which is, which is lawful to be done or not unlawful to be done? And who decides? Us? Are we voting about it? Shall we vote about, for example, our morality? Or we need to have kind of uh, an objective an objective, for example, uh, you could say, an impact or objective influencer on us to tell us what are the things, what are the things which is lawful, what are the things which is not, not, not lawful. What do you think? If you choose to be us, you know, basically, and us to vote, the Nazis, they voted for Hitler. They voted. Well, that's that's not, not, not super true. The Nazis only had about 40% of uh, the parliament before they completely took over. It doesn't matter. It happened. Forty percent voted for him. Sure, it, 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 which means they, they had power. They it had power, it, it, but they by the way, 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 it doesn't matter. So since there is forty percent, that tells you something. Yeah. That tells you that it is okay for forty percent of a population to dehumanize other people, to kill other people because they believe that they are lower class, and that's their morality. Which means 40% of, of Germany at that time, which is Germany plus as well other areas around it, which is Austria and other things, which, which we're talking about a huge number of area, which they agreed, 40% of them agreed on this. That's my point. So who decides what's good, what's bad? You, me, community, who? I don't have a good answer for that. The good answer, there should be an objective morality. Objective this objective is not, is, is, is not attached to us. It has to be independent from us, telling us what is best for us. Because he is the one who created us and knows what is best for us. And do you, you don't, or do you believe in uh, evolution? Like that humans came from uh, apes or anything like that? No, why, why, no. Do you know why? Uh, because if that's the case, as you said, you said before, what, what, we have to do what's good for us, right? As we are. And something that I, I've tried to put in perspective recently is that there's uh, the belief that humans came from apes, or that we are apes, or related to apes. Okay. And I think that is very true, because if you take a look at human behavior, Human diets, human human uh, social hierarchies, identical to apes. Actually, no. We, we, we could be more identical to other animals. Lions, as well, for example. They have they have yeah, the they, they have meat. the no they have the hierarchy. They have hierarchy. They have a hierarchy, but yeah. they eat only meat. But my point is still. My point is we are anatomically, physically, pigs. socially identical pigs. to apes. Pigs. They do the same we're thing. We're identical in every way, not just in a few ways like pigs and lions. We're identical. My point is, no, 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 not this idea. You need to understand. It doesn't mean that we have similarity with other with other animals. It doesn't mean that we have a common ancestor. No, not necessarily the case. You understand? So my point is, they try to use this. Actually, we don't have. Firstly, firstly, we don't have a, a proof 
for example, a scientific proof, except that it's, uh, these hypotheses, they try to use it, the similarity, etc. But again, not necessarily the, the case. that were like 90, well, I guess that's not entirely true. I'll take that back. Yeah. yeah. So we have, there are some similarity with other, with, with, uh, with, uh, with, with birds. We are some, for example, what do you call it, that there are some, what do you call it, not, um, not the not the apes. What they call it? There is which lives in Madagascar, Madagascar, which is similar. The one which is the, the, on the trees. What they are called? You know what they call? Yeah, I, I, I pictured it, but uh, <laughs> the word. huh? Orangutan. No, yeah, uh, yeah, the the ones which is in Madagascar, Madagascar. Yeah, they are they are similar to to monkeys, but they are not monkeys. Lemurs. Huh? Lemurs. Yeah, lemurs, for example, but they are not monkeys. Again, they, they are the different breed, different thing. So that's why. It, and they have they have similar diet, whether they eat meat, they eat different things. My point is, it doesn't mean that if there are similar things that we have a common ancestor. Now, but the answer comes from the Quran, which Quran affirms and 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 uh, affirms that God has created Adam, and God has created Adam from the soil. That's why the similarity comes that because we are created from this soil, which is the same soil that was created with other animals, the same thing. So that's why we have kind of commonality between us in terms of our, you could say, and our body nature, yeah? And that's why that, that you need to understand that the, our Prophet, peace be upon him, or one of the scholars of Islam said, that our body is attached to the earth, which is the animal side of us. And our soul is, is high, and it could be better than the angels if we worship God in the best way. So if we are, if we are attached to the earth and do what the, what the other animals will be worse than the animals, but if we are fulfilling the duties of God, yeah, and we uh, and we elevated our our souls and our uh, and, and our and our behavior above the above the our for example our body nature, then we're going to be even compared with the, with the, with the angels, and we'll be better than angels. So that's why we are saying to you, Matthew, to accept Islam. That's what we are saying to you, and then you will find the guidance of Islam. Then you will find everything in place. You will find everything makes sense. Find this is what's actually the truth, and that's what this is the purpose of our life. Basically, it doesn't mean we have to stick in the mosque and do nothing. No, we we work, we study. Our brother here, you study what, brother? Uh, I have done PhD in physics. And then... PhD in physics. I did as well. Uh, I was I did PhD in mathematics as well. I myself, I'm doing another PhD in 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 finance, etc. So the point is, we study. We love we love science. We study. We do things. We we have our our the golden age of the Muslims. You know that they have done a great actually deal to the science and to the medicine to, diff, to different things, which means that we are we open that we open the gates for science. But we know that our our knowledge is limited. And we know salam rahmatullah. We know our knowledge is limited. And we know we are bounded and we're restricted as well with the guidance of God at the end of the day. That's why there are things which is beyond our understanding. That's what we are inviting you to Islam. Does that make sense to you, Matthew? So Matthew, why don't you then become a Muslim? There's a lot to be talked about. We're here, we're here to talk. That's called Speaker's Corner. <laughs> We're here to talk, man. Do you come here every Sunday? I come here every Sunday. I try to come here every Sunday. I, I, of course, I don't have like a stand or anything. I try to come here pretty often too to, to, talk, yeah. to hear people talk. I, I and try, that's why, I'm and to that's get lots of perspective. You see here, the Quran answer all these things. The Quran is not science book. But the Quran has facts. Has facts, proven by science, but they are facts. Only recently been proven. And I will tell you a few, few of these facts, yeah? Then to tell you, firstly, who is the person, Muhammad, peace be upon him, who is he? He was a prophet of God. He was sent 1400 years ago, an illiterate man. You understand what means illiterate at that time? Illiterate, unable to read and write, yeah? During his time. And then God inspired him the Quran, which is itself, yeah? is so sophisticated language in Arabic literature. There is no one, there is no Arabic literature better than the Quran. It is the standard. That's why the, the, the Arabs, they were known with that. They used to be literate, they used to be people expert in Arabic literature, they were expert in poetry. When the Quran came to them, it shocked them. There is nothing similar to this. But at the same time, it's not just only, it's not just only a poetry way, it's not just only in a melody way, which has a beautiful sound. And as well, it has meanings, it has deep meanings. 
It has deep information and it has guidance. It has commandments. It has certain things, talking about God, talking about our relation with God, talking about our relation with the prophets of God and Messenger of God, peace be upon all of them. As well, this man, he could take an advantage of his time because no one knows about it. And I will tell you an example. Yeah? And that tells you how honest he was and how the Quran and himself is true based on scientific facts nowadays. Yeah? In his time, during his time, he had a son, his last son, his name is Ibrahim. He named his son Ibrahim after his great grandfather Abraham, peace be upon him. He named his youngest son Ibrahim. His son Ibrahim was two years old and he died. Yeah? When his son died in the very same day, they had an eclipse, a sun eclipse. In the very same day. So what the people start saying, yeah? And he, at that time, where there were a few Muslims in Medina, still most of the Arab Peninsula, they were pagans, they were non-Muslims, and they wanted a sign to show that he is a prophet of God, etc. So, and the sun eclipse. During that time, does anyone know 1400 years ago, what's the sun eclipse, what, how, why does it eclipse, etc.? No one knows, yes? No one knows. He could, have, he, he could have said to the people, when the sun eclipse, the people, they said, yeah, the son is because of the death of the son of the prophet. He died that God wanted to show. He is sad for the son of for the son of. His. He wanted to show that the sky and the and the, and the sun is sad for his for the loss of the prophet, the loss of the son of the prophet, etc. Peace be upon him. So they, they spread these rumors. Yeah. So he came out, illiterate man, doesn't know nothing about this. Why the eclipse were doesn't know. But God inspired him. He came, he could take advantage of this moment to say to the people, yes, by the way, the son of yes, because God loves me. That's why I'm a true prophet of God. You follow me, you see here? Rather than, rather than what he did, what he did, what he said to the people. He said to the people, the sun and the moon, those are signs of God. Those are signs of God, created by God. They will never have, have eclipse due to the death or the life of anyone including myself, including my own family, has no significance. But if you see this, just haste and run and pray to God. That's all. That's all. Nothing else. So the point is, Matthew, did, was he able to mislead the people at this moment? I have no idea. You, you know, he was able. No one knows what's like, you could say this. Again, bear in mind, he's illiterate. Doesn't know nothing about the Greek philosophy or Indian philosophy. Doesn't know nothing of this. Illiterate man. Has no clue about this in terms of science. He wasn't a scientist. What he said to the people, the sun and the moon, those are signs of God. Those are created by God. If you see them, the eclipse, just go haste and run and pray to God. That's all. Nothing. Was he able to mislead the people? Yes, he was. Was he able to take this for his advantage? Yes. But did he do that? No. Why he didn't do it? Because he's a prophet of God. Because he will never say something out of lie. Even for the sake of his follower, even for the sake of his faith to grow up, he didn't use this for his advantage. <laughs> and this is a true and authentic story. What does that tell you about his characteristic? About his character, what does that tell you? You lost me. Yeah? You lost me. So it tells you that he's an honest man. Am I right, man? I don't have an answer to that, I'm sorry. I, I'll, oh, be, I'll be honest. He's in a competition right now. Matthew, I know it's hard to take hard decisions. I'm not saying it's easy. But the hereafter worth it. We're gonna die, Matthew, eventually. And we're gonna be standing before God. When he will be questioning you at that time. Why you haven't listened to my message? What will be your answer? I wasn't convinced enough. But inside you, Matthew, inside you, I know deep inside you, 
there is good thing there. Deep inside you, you want it to believe. But I know you are reluctant due to many other factors. Just think about the biggest thing in your life, which is the purpose of your creation, the purpose of your existence. While well, you are here, and there is God, and God will question you. And if you didn't submit to his will, then there's going to be a consequence for this. And each one will face the consequence of our decision, of his decision. What are you going to do? How are you going to answer? That's why Matthew, we are inviting you to Islam. And we are urging you to become Muslim. Because that is the answer for all the questions that come to you. What do you think, Matthew? I think I'm probably going to meet you here again a couple of times on Sunday. All right. We'll have a few more conversations. All right. That but for now, good. I'm getting pretty cold, so I think okay. I'm yeah. going to All right. Well, I don't want to delay. You have a Quran? You have a clip of the Quran? You got it? Okay. And you could go. Yes, mate. Okay. That's something worth it. Do you need as well? Okay. All right, Matthew. Nice to meet you. All right, nice meeting you. Name My name again? is Muhammad. Muhammad. Nice to meet you, Matthew. Nice Look after you. yourself. Yes. All right? You too. I wish to see you again, but read, read properly about the Quran. And when you read, open your mind and heart. One thing. The other thing, I want you to, I will ask you a favor. Today when you go home, take a shower, a warm shower, then sit there and say, God, you are there. You hear me, you see me, guide me. Try to do this and see how things work. Yeah? If you are sincere, God will guide you. That's all. We ask Allah to guide you, Matthew. All right? Take care of yourself. All right. Bye. Anyway, to wrap up, inshallah, alhamdulillah, we had a fruitful discussion with our friend Matthew. We ask Allah, first of all, to guide him. And uh, the most important thing, us, to represent Islam in the best way. And alhamdulillah, that to see that's one of the good things as well in our community. Alhamdulillah, we have very, very well educated brothers. Uh, MashaAllah, like this brother, Jalallah Khair. People who are actually hard workers in, the, in science and different fields as well, which they can utilize their actually their knowledge to, to uh, inshallah, to promote Islam, inshallah. Ta'ala. And that's something which is encouragement for all our brothers and sisters to to try to promote Islam to the best of your ability. May Allah Azza wa Jal reward you all. May Allah increase us all in knowledge and iman. And may Allah Azza wa Jal makes us a cause to bring people to Islam. Wa jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.